The 2004 Boxing Day tsunami hit Thailand's Andaman coast at around 10 a.m. A series of waves killed more than 8,000 people and left many more without house or means to make a living. Copra Tong, about 100 kilometers north of Phuket, was not spared from the waves. At the northern tip of the island, there was Pak Chok, a small fisherman village. The tsunami wiped it out completely and killed 75 villagers. The Lions Club International Foundation participated in the reconstruction and donated the new village to the people of Pak Chok, Ban Lion. But today, only 10 out of 160 houses have people in. These, including the two houses used by Naukratis, an NGO that runs a sea turtles conservation project on the island. Barry Bendel arrived here for the first time in 2009 and today works with Naukratis. People aren't staying here because they basically don't have enough work. Also, it was several years after the tsunami before the houses were built. And a lot of people didn't come because they had already established themselves on the mainland and they had other jobs. And other houses were also built by charities on the mainland. So, in fact, some people have more than one house now. I can see, looking at the village, that there's a problem in the way it's set up. The houses are close together. People in rural areas want to have a large area around the house where they can run their chickens and keep their equipment for fishing. And they also like to have their house near where their fishing boat is. And the house is built back from the water, so it's not very attractive to local people. Today, the community centre of the village is abandoned and a school that could fit 100 children, sponsored by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, is falling to pieces. Currently, the Lions Village stands like a fine example of good intentions of our catastrophe aid in the world. A lot of effort went to build it, a little bit effort went to the planning of the sustainability of the whole village. After the tsunami, a lot of the people who came to live here weren't in the original village of Pakchok, which was destroyed by the tsunami. A lot of those people didn't want to come back, but people were offered houses who had come from other villages. So the woman in this house comes from Tungdap, the village of the south. Other people came from Tapayoi, the village which didn't suffer much damage at all. Mani has been living here for nine years and is part of a homestay program set up after the tsunami. She believes this program can offer a professional career to local people because guests pay 11 pounds a day for a bed and three meals. But of the 15 families who join the program, only three are left. Most of the guests are volunteers of the NGO Naukradis, who spend weeks here patrolling the beaches. In 2013 only, the NGO booked 600 nights at the homestay. But Naukradis is also collecting scientific data to protect the ecosystem. So this morning was not, not a very good morning. Uh, all we saw was one large jellyfish. The main reason we are here it is to a conservation work with the sea turtles. So the priority number one is to protect the nest they possibly have here on the beaches. And then after the nest is hatched, we will do measurements and we will do GPS tracks and all this. And this is done in collaboration with the Phuket Marine Biology Center, which is linked to the Thai government. The second task we do is the turtle behavior observation that we do on the feeding area they have right outside the island. And this is to gather enough data to make a convincing case in the future to announce that area to be a marine protected area. I can see that people could use scientific data and information that conservation projects develop for the political arguments that they're going to have to have about how they're going to develop the island. And it's just one source of information for those people who want to have a cautious, careful, more structured sort of tourism, rather than the sort of free-for-all that you get in other places.